Hello there, my friends. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. This is an entire education on how to manage your menopause your way. And it includes all the big stuff like learning how to prevent the big ticket items that are nobody's desired way. And one of those things that none of us desire is Alzheimer's disease. So I have been giving you video after video on Alzheimer's for months now, and I'm still not finished. Now, you may be uttering a bad four-letter word right now <laughs> if you're sick of hearing about Alzheimer's, but I can assure you that you're better off getting fed up now than you are getting Alzheimer's later. And speaking of bad four-letter words, today we're going to be talking about something that has become a bad four-letter word in recent years. But you know, what qualifies as a bad four-letter word changes over time. Crap used to be a bad four-letter word, but now it's not. Heck used to be a bad four-letter word, but now it's not. I'm not sure what happens to convert a bad four-letter word into an acceptable four-letter word, but it happens. In the realm of diet, fats used to be a bad four-letter word, but now it's not. There's a whole new word that is taking its, taking its place, <laughs> and we're going to talk about the new bad four-letter word that has replaced the word fats. It's C-A-R-B. That's right. We're talking about carbs. Now, I'm willing to say the word carb, even though I am not one to use bad four-letter words. <laughs> In fact, I am such a goody two-shoes that I just mouth a bad four-letter word even when I'm telling a joke. <laughs> so just be aware of how dedicated I am to your education, that I would go so far as to give an entire video on a bad four-letter word and actually say it rather than just mouth it. This is video number 266, the 31st video in the Alzheimer's unit. We're tackling the part of the unit that presents all your dietary options for preventing Alzheimer's. And so far, I've given you a video on the 14 factors that determine your dietary options, a video on calorie restriction versus intermittent fasting, a video on antioxidants and anti-inflammatory foods, and a video on all three food groups, proteins, carbs, and fats. This video will address the carbs more closely, in particular, as they relate to diabetes. Now, you may be uttering another bad four-letter word, <laughs> wondering why in the heck, which is no longer a bad four-letter word, why in the world <laughs> I'm addressing diabetes in a unit on Alzheimer's. And if you are, please just hold your tongue and stay tuned. You are going to be shocked out of your gourd because I will get you thinking about diabetes in a whole different way. All of chapter 33 is on Alzheimer's in both editions of my book, the first and the second, but this particular piece is only available here in this video. It's a bonus. Okay, so let's get started. Ages ago, in video 245, I gave you a great big list bearing all the risk factors that increase your likelihood of getting Alzheimer's. You probably blurted out a few bad four-letter words then, too. <laughs> well, here it is again. Two-thirds of the way down the chart, in the modifiable category of risk factors, you see the line item of diabetes in blue. And notice that the next column designates diabetes type 2 adult onset as the specific type of diabetes that increases your risk for Alzheimer's. So we are talking only about diabetes type 2, not type 1. Diabetes type 1 is juvenile onset diabetes that manifests in childhood, and it is due to insulin deficiency. With it, your body does not produce insulin. Alternatively, diabetes type 2 is due to insulin resistance. With it, you do produce insulin, but your body doesn't know how to use it properly. And that one is the result of what you eat. So let's connect the dots on how carbs can cause diabetes 
which can cause Alzheimer's disease. I think the best place to start is with history. I'll call this the devolution of our human diet, and I use the word devolution rather than evolution because it has definitely been a downward spiral. It really started at the turn of the 20th century when there were great advances in agriculture, technology, and medicine. People went from living on farms to living in cities. They went from eating food from their own animals and crops to eating the food produced by the food industry. And they went from focusing on whole foods to focusing on the individual proteins, carbohydrates, and fats in foods. And when people started dying from diseases related to their new way of eating, scientists started looking for answers as to why. At first, the primary focus was on heart attacks. And as I explained to you in the unit on heart attack, in the 1950s, fat became the culprit, even though there was evidence of culpability on the part of carbs at the same time. But since the pitch for fat won out, everybody stopped focusing on carbs altogether. And the dietary guidelines were adjusted to begin the low-fat movement. You know, things like this happen all the time. Throughout history, whether you're talking about foods or hormones or the healthcare system itself, people get stuck in a rut of thinking a certain way. And despite the fact that there is evidence to the contrary all around them, they fail to open their eyes and see that they are completely off track. This happens to many women when they first encounter the first signs of menopause. It's as if the brainwashing is so intense that nobody actually uses their brain to wake them up to the fact that what they've been told just really makes no sense at all. So everybody followed the low fat plan while adding sugar to compensate for the missing fat. And what do you know? They all started getting fatter and fatter and fatter. In 1994, things got even worse when the American Diabetes Association recommended that people consume 60 to 70% of their calories from carbs. At the same time, the food industry increased its production of refined carbs, which contain no fiber. That's when the diabetes type 2 exploded. So by then, we had two deadly diseases that were totally out of control, heart attacks and diabetes. Yet, people still failed to connect the dots and let go of the low-fat mentality. You see, that's when everybody should have blurted out bad four-letter words. But instead, they just kept on eating low-fat, no-fat, sugar-laden, processed foods by the food industry. In the early 2000s, researchers tested low-carb diets against low-fat diets and discovered all sorts of interesting things. Carb restriction improved glucose control. Carb restriction was as effective as fat restriction for weight loss. Carb restriction lessened heart attacks. Carb restriction lessened diabetes. But did you ever hear about any of those things? Or did you just stick with the low-fat food frenzy? Of course, if you didn't keep eating a low-fat diet, it was no fault of yours. Nobody delivered the information to you that would have enabled you to know that it was the wrong way to go. So go ahead. Blurt out a bad four-letter word now. <laughs> and here's the real kicker. Along with the surge in diabetes type 2, there was a surge in Alzheimer's. And nobody bothered to inform you about that either. It's bad four-letter word time again. <laughs> so what you have now is a situation in which one culprit, carbs, is at the root of three different life-threatening diseases, diabetes type 2, heart attack, and Alzheimer's. There's actually been an absolutely parallel increase in diabetes type 2 and Alzheimer's. It turns out that elderly people who eat a lot of carbs have a four-fold increased risk of mild cognitive impairment that eventually becomes Alzheimer's disease. 
And diabetes type 2 doubles your risk for Alzheimer's disease. Dang, that's huge. It's so huge that some people actually call Alzheimer's diabetes type 3. Do you realize how significant the effect of carbs has to be on your risk of Alzheimer's for there to be a reference to it as diabetes type 3? Go ahead, say a bad four-letter word. Now, of course, all carbs are not the same in their tendency to cause diabetes or Alzheimer's. The bad carbs are sugar, refined carbs, starchy carbs, and processed foods. Fresh fruits and vegetables are not included in the bad carb list. But overall, carb has taken the place of fats as the bad four-letter word. And everything associated with them has gotten a bad name. But what I find interesting is that instead of correcting the problem by informing the public that carb, rather than fats, is the bad word, food, the food industry just keeps promoting the fat is a bad word fallacy. And as society just keeps getting fatter and fatter and sicker and sicker, other industries accommodate the chaos caused by carbs. Instead of teaching people how to prevent the diabetes, heart attacks, and Alzheimer's caused by carbs, the medical industry treats them as chronic diseases. Other industries accommodate the, chaos, the carb chaos too. Airplanes make bigger seats for fatter people. Stores provide those electric carts to transport fatter people. Toy companies even make fatter dolls to accommodate people's perception of what constitutes a normal body happiness. Mattel modified its Barbie doll from this to this. I guess this one is Barbie and this one is Carby. <laughs> I mean, why should a toy company need to create a fatter doll to accommodate a bad four-letter word? You know, there is a lot of information on this. It's just not mainstream. Instead of making it frontline news, it's mostly contained in books by doctors and neuroscientists who see what's happening and they want to announce it to the world. Here's a whole stack of them. I've read them all. But these are not books that get the attention of the general public. And by and large, each book targets only one philosophy or principle. They're all accurate to a degree. The problem is that there is more to it than just one target, no matter what the target. And the other problem is that they all demonize one thing and glorify another. It's as if they label one food a devil and another an angel, but an angel that is the answer to everything. I think some books try to be Bibles on the right way. Of course, there's a great deal of truth in all of them, and they are all fantastic resources. But you probably don't have time to read all of them and put it all together the way I have. If you read only one book and treat it as the Bible, you could miss the big picture. I, of course, have read, highlighted, tabbed, outlined, and charted all these books. It's what I do. These two books target and promote omega-3 fats. This one demonizes all carbs, especially grains, and glorifies fats. This one also demonizes carbs. This one demonizes sugar. This one demonizes vegetable oils and praises all real food that is not processed. These two glorify high-fat diets and intermittent fasting. Now, I loved all these books, and I recommend all of them as great resources. You'll see a list of them in the description for this video. I love reading them all. I, I think it's great as long as you read them all. <laughs> if you do, you will get the big picture. But notice that they all focus on food groups and then claim 
that whatever they glorify can prevent diseases in all the organs of your body. And they all cite studies to support whatever they're targeting. Of course, they all leave out all the studies that contradict whatever they're targeting too. You see, that's a common mistake that a lot of menopausal women make when they look for studies on this or that also. Just as there are no books that are the Bible on these matters, neither are there research studies that are. In any case, be aware of any resource that pushes one product, practice, or angle as the right way that will solve all your problems and prevent all diseases. You see, I don't do that. Instead, I focus on organ systems and particular diseases. And I apply the great information in all these books to that particular organ system or disease. So instead of telling you that a high fat or low carb diet is the answer to all your menopausal woes, I teach you the advantages and disadvantages of each food group to that specific organ or disease. The bottom line is that your diet is absolutely critical to every aspect of your health. Knowing the specifics of how it can benefit you in one way or another with regard to one disease risk or another is very powerful. So the summary is that Alzheimer's constitutes diabetes type three because bad carbs such as sugar, refined grains, starchy carbs, and processed foods damage your brain just as much as they damage your heart and your whole metabolic system. And that's a good place to stop today because it's a nice setup for the next video, which will be on fresh versus processed versus fortified and enriched foods for preventing Alzheimer's. So go to menopausetailor.me to schedule a consultation if you want me to tailor anything specifically to you. It's a great shortcut to getting everything you need from this education and all the tools to get whatever you want for managing your menopause your way. Go to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you want to follow me. Stay here to subscribe and come back in a week to see the next video. <laughs> Bye!